Hello. My, my name's Nick Thompson. Uh, over on the far side, we've got Brendan Clark. And in the middle, we have Dr. Connor Brady. Gents, how are you? I'm Grace. I'm Grace. You can't be, nothing can be wrong on a sunny day. It's just, oh, it's honestly, God, I was born in the wrong climate. I think I say that all the time, but I just, I am unputdownable on a sunny day. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'd say it's nice. Are you, are you digging around in the muck still, Bren, in the nice, in the heat, the big red neck? Yeah, that's what this is. It's muck. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, nice. no, the garage is just about deconstructed now. We've got, um, you know, earthworks starting. Oh, it's just, yeah. I've Deconstructed, that's a very posh way of saying knocked down. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I'm waiting to start eating out in these restaurants which do deconstructed apple pie. Yeah, ah, I was I was eating out <laughs> when they dropped on the way to you. <laughs> I had my first meal outside a restaurant there recently because Ireland's a little bit behind England. And uh, so we're with outdoor dining going on. And uh, I love wearing shorts. I don't know if you guys wear shorts anymore. Yeah. I don't think anybody wants to see 60-year-old legs, but mine are 40 years old, so they're still <laughs> very tolerated. <laughs> So I was, uh, I wear shorts all the time in the heat anyway. And so I was down outside this restaurant and uh, my prawns pill pill come. And first of all, they're soaked in boiling vegetable oil. And after reading that bloody Captain Channel book, you're looking at it now going, actually, I am not in, I'm like mentally, it's, I've switched off. Look, I'm not yeah. going to be bursting that book to people. But I was, here's what happened. I'm sitting there, and my two kids are behaving and we get our food and we're eating the food and it's great. And I'm wearing my shorts and I, and I love these shorts. Uh, but then... Uh, Elaine was pulling off the tail on one of the prawns pill pill with a knife and fork and like a child she just pulls off the tail and oil just spills out of the thing onto my shorts <laughs> and now I'm after taking my shorts out of the wash and they've got a stain where you don't want to stain them. <laughs> <laughs> and I was planning on wearing these shorts for the summer which Elaine so, says apart so from so my six year old legs you've got to deal with the incontinent 40 year old is that <laughs> So, so to anybody listening, please, guys, you know, we give you a lot. So if anybody, please, has any tips for removing oil from shorts, I need them badly. I can afford new shorts. It's just I love these ones. They're my favorites. Um, so if anybody knows how to get well, cooking oil out of shorts. That, that goes on one of these radio programs, always talks about vinegar. Maybe this is a new use for Ooh. apple cider vinegar. Yeah, I can try. <laughs> yeah, I'm worried that I'm looking at everything covered in mayonnaise and peanut butter and everything for the end of the night. You know? <laughs> okay, here's my, my thought. You get brown paper and you iron it. You iron the brown oh, yes. paper to, to, to soak it up. That's a good idea. If anyone's got any other thoughts, yeah, okay. Okay. They're, they're all saying vanish. Vanish. Okay. <laughs> Karen Reed, cheeky monkey, says tripe. Tripe. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work, Karen. Call me on See, I was trying to be really holistic. <laughs> <laughs> they all come in with just get a proper clean. Tripe. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, well, thanks, for, thanks for the tips. Anyway, how do you get on, Nick? Anything exciting happening to you this week? Uh, yes, something not half as exciting as the stains on your trousers, Obviously. Connor. Uh, but I've just, you know, I, was, I, I, was, I went away with the family for the weekend and it was the most glorious. Bl uh, sunny days and we were with you know six other families and we had oh, a hoot, and we were playing rugby and we we're playing cricket and it was all very oh, man, it was amazing cool. and i had a three-hour journey there three-hour journey back and so i've got a lot of the way through this book sorry guys it's yet another book but it, <laughs> it is it is it's as good as shanahan Whoa. Is that why is better. That, see, this this popped up on my Facebook stream as an advert for the book, and I or or something like or on Audible, and I think it knows oh, that yeah. we're sharing our oh, readings. Yeah. Oh, you're just <laughs> you're serious. Yeah. yeah. Will you listen to this like either so one of two things, Nick? Either your kids had to listen to this for three hours in the car, or you had your earphones on and you weren't talking to your family on that. <laughs> 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 we, we had to go down in two cars because the, the kids were finishing late and I had to go down and put the tent up. Oh lovely. So I had I had the whole oh, car to myself. Oh, nice. Nick, Nick, hold on, oh, put the tent up. I saw the video. Yeah. You put a pump it's in it and you set it going and you sat back in the car. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I should play you. It came out of a suitcase, didn't it? This is like. <laughs> I'll play you. We have to I'll put, put that the video up of you uh, of you doing that, Nick. There you go. Check this tent out. I want. He has to learn how to reverse the um okay, the video yeah. so that it actually goes up <laughs> rather than him letting it down. Can, can right. you, can you believe taking the thing down? We're going to be telling our kids. To work out whether he, the kids were inside the tent when he yeah. was doing this. Oh. <laughs> it's the quietest they've ever been. Look at that. 
20 <laughs> seconds to de to deconstruct. We're going to be telling our kids, oh, back in my day, there was poles and strings and pegs. And <laughs> yeah. You never had no pegs. <laughs> and right. the, if you put that the side of your soaking wet, you'd put your little brother against that. And it's like, oh, my God. Tent were hellish. <laughs> Anyway, it was um, proper canvas in my day. Anyway, <laughs> we're talking, we're talking, we're talking itch. We are itch. talking right. itch. Sorry. Guys, could I could I start off on the itch if I could be so rude? Oh, go first of all, before go we go to itch, I just want to say uh first of all, thanks to everybody on Patreon. Uh it's our patron followers on Patreon, sorry. Uh they are the people that voted for itch tonight, and that's probably the way we're gonna do it in the future because it saves us having to think about it. There are too many to choose, so we um, so the guys voted for Itch tonight, and so you'll find us on Raw Pet Medics on Patreon.com. And uh, guys, if you have the price of a cup of coffee to keep the show going, uh, we really, really appreciate it. Every little bit helps. If you have it, great. If you don't, you're absolutely free to watch it. No, no stress at all. We totally understand. And the, uh, the other person I want to thank is uh, Patricia Gethin and her group, Raw and Holistic Cat and Dog Support Group. Um, everybody knows I'm a massive fan of this group. It's the only group that um, I've ever been an admin of outside of my own. Um, so, like, there's just a couple of things that are slightly different about this group because uh, Trish actually provides a free service where if you say to her, I'm looking for a natural vet in my area, that's her thing that she likes to do. So off she goes with tail wagging and she'll find the nearest holistic vet to your house for nothing. So you just join her group and you ask her and then this other building up a huge huge database of natural vets which is the first thing i like about them they also have a buddy scheme so people that are already clued into raw help newbies and they're signed onto them uh, you know what i mean so it's just a, it's a really handy way of helping them so you don't get the same kind of new questions uh, onto the page so it's kept for really interesting questions uh, and they have a list of kind of natural um of admins just to just to quickly name them there's me there's dr erica halley there's dr isla fishburn everybody knows those three well those two karen rosenfeld a phenomenal uh, source in natural kind of thought. You, you should check her out. Uh, Ivana Holub, uh, Rita Hogan, and Jackie Gowland. I couldn't get into the, the bits and pieces about what they do, but guys, check out the page. Raw and the Cat and Dog Support Group. Patricia, thanks for your help. She's also going to be on the page tonight, but uh, really, really helpful for newbies that have questions. They might have the answers. Check them out. Thanks for your support, Patricia. And yeah, just to say, Patricia. on Patreon, uh, Patricia, when I did the... Um, the poll itchy dogs are way but more than everybody else 73 versus 35 for protein versus 17 for heart disease however they were all quite popular i feel um and for 125 votes that's a, that's probably over half of our, our people on on patreon patreon yeah and patricia said itchy dogs and skin issues is the number one issue in her group and she's got what twenty eight thousand people thirty nine thousand now oh well, there you go so yeah. Um, so, so the next one on the list was protein and then heart disease. So, should we do it in that in that order? Should we yeah. next week should we do protein and then we'll do heart disease? Because somebody else has said they really wanted to do heart disease. Yeah, cool. Yeah, th those two are you, actually, yeah. so I'm just delighted to be talking into them. So, protein next week that decides, and we'll just do the poll every two or three times, two or three weeks. That makes sense, and then hitting them all the time. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's do that. Okay, guys. Tonight is itch. Okay, and we've already covered itch uh, before, and you'll see it back through our Facebook videos. Just search on the Facebook page, Raw Pet Medics, and search for itch, and you'll find the pre previous video so we've gone through some of our main uh, tips and tricks that how we would deal with it but that doesn't mean you pick the thing that's most likely going to knock off as many things in front of you so it makes little point i heard somebody pulled up their grass and it fixed their dog's chronic itch issues that's amazing i think what a her herculean effort but it's not the first thing that lady did the first thing is you go through the basics and you hit them again and make sure you haven't strayed into some mistake in my opinion i blame everything on food first because in my opinion, the majority of cases, it's right. You get these issues coming to you, dogs with recurring skin conditions, and they have this allergy test that NASA like reading with like, you know, environmental allergens of all sycamore trees and dust mites and pollen and flea allergies. And when you fix the gut and get them stabilized and healthy and robust, those things just evaporate. So the word allergy just isn't isn't correct there. So I kind of go that from the inside out. That's where I'm, I'm focusing. I'm not always right, but that's where I start because that's where I'd be strongest. So in that respect, when you're watching the previous video, please remember to go through your foods. Move to single protein as Nick will push. Okay, that's a, that is solid advice here. Single protein foods. 
uh, change your supplier. Go to a, a, the same single protein from another supplier, but move through it every couple of weeks. Be a scientist. Keep your notes. Is this helping? You know, move through your supplements. If you reduce your supplements, we're inclined to dump a lot of stuff in. And finally, don't forget yeast, which at the heart of it is a good floor, a good issue as well, food issue related. So you're going to have to need to knock out all the carbs and sugar from that dog's diet. Uh, and there's a couple of things you can put in that yeast doesn't like, which you've already covered. A little bit of crushed garlic, a little bit of dried olive leaf, some basic kind of yeast one one things that can help uh but it maybe that's another show to be honest with you but they're the top two things i'd be talking about i just wanted to finish after just re-enthusing about all that thing about diet is that uh, atopy asthma and particularly hay fever is on the rise in humans over the last 20 to 30 years i'm just reading this off the screen if i look a bit funny um and the main question was uh is it due to more pot is it more pollen in the atmosphere due to global warming is that why seasonal allergies are on the rise and what this what the bit of literature that i'm looking at this afternoon said was that pollen season is getting stronger and longer a recent study found that pollen season increased by 20 days annually between 1990 and 2020 while pollen concentrations in north america increased by 21 percent over the same time period so they are getting stronger and longer these pollen seasons if it was a pollen issue in your dog and you've focused on food and you've gotten all those bits and pieces right and it was definitely seasonal we're going to talk about some natural treatments that we all love and that kind of stuff that can help uh then you know if it was a pollen issue then things like uh, covering your air conditioning vents with cheesecloth and indoor uh, air purifiers and stuff that chronic hay fever sufferers have to use can alleviate that issue however a, the most recent study on this states the reason for the increase in atopy and hay fever in humans is unknown our data suggests that it's unlikely to be an increased exposure to specific allergens, allergens such as pollen because sensitivity to both indoor and outdoor allergens have increased. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. They had a quick look at what was causing all this. Uh, so in, my, in, in the back of my head, I am just thinking we are getting more and more chronically inflamed and this is not helping us deal with seasonal allergies so mm. in the same way that when you get a dog with this nasal like reading of environmental allergens and you fix the food ones and get the gut happy and robust and these other ones melt away i have in my head and i'm sure this probably isn't right lads but this is the way it works for me i had like your immune system is like a force field you have so much of it and if you are bombarded with cereal-based dry food and too much pesticides and just stress and an injury and all sorts of bad teeth god on and on then that's going to go, Ooh, and then any sort of challenges becomes just a stressor for the immune system, and it has this hyper response. That's the way I think about it. So I think if I can pump up that immune system and make things normal again, that these everyday allergens that the dog should be able, they should be able for it, and that's what I'm personally seeing when I do um, these kind of recurrent skin and gut issue things. Um, that's the way I think about it. it. Might be a bit simplistic, but. That, that was my, my speech. And Sh Shanahan would say that it's uh, in the human sphere, the reason that we're getting sicker, that we're markedly sicker over the last 30 years, is sugar and vegetable and seed oils, which are screwing up our immune system. No, I'm so, so if you're if, well, if your dog is eating... That. She, does, she does qualify that it's processed. So yeah. heat-treated and processed oils. Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 it's difficult to get them any other way so just yeah, 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 it, yeah. keeping it simple yeah yeah uh well, that, that, is, that is ruining our immune systems it's, yeah it's, it's aging us yeah it's putting I'm, us in, in the ground i think uh, a, a I lot of our feeders will say that's where i would come back into what connor was saying and, mm. and uh, actually it isn't necessarily choosing that single source protein but moving those dogs onto raw a good raw chosen diet which is from pasture fed animals with exactly. loads of nutrients in exactly. but actually it's that bit that does the maximum change for improving the skin yeah. rather than necessarily the fact that we've isolated them down to yeah. single just, proteins. That's cool. Actually, if you look at the studies that show um, the um, the amount of skin disease which is down to allergy, relatively speaking, it's quite low compared to things like parasites, which we talked a little bit about last time and, mm. and certainly is, is top of the list. Um, you know, 80% of skin disease out there is on parasites. We're going to touch on what? that. Tell us yeah. about that, Nick. Like, I mean, we dealt with parasites last time as it might be a cause of itch, but like we didn't really get into like natural treatments. Like yeah. it, these are raw feeders on here and the raw feeders are saying, we're not putting vegetable oils and sugar in guys. We've done the single protein thing. So, so next thing you look at will probably be parasites. So what, what about that, Nick? 
It would be parasites. Okay, so there's, there's a few natural ways to uh, cope with fleas and ticks. None of them are as good as uh, the Brevectos, the Ceresto Collars, the Advantage, the Advocates, okay? But they don't, they're not toxic. They don't have a list of side effects this long. Uh, they don't damage the environment, which I think is key. Yeah. And also, when you put something on or in your dog, you are then going to be ingesting that in a really small way because whenever you stroke, imagine you put some uh, advocate on your dog, okay, on a Tuesday. You then stroke the dog on a Wednesday and pick up an organic apple to eat. That organic apple is no longer organic because it's covered in a tiny patina of pesticide. Yeah. Okay? And that terrifies me. The bee populations are coming down. Told you. Yeah, they're coming down dreadfully insect life that you know insects of uh, every day water and, life uh, uh, in, uh, uh, branch of insect life is being killed so yeah. we rivers have and streams in, sorry rivers and streams remember there's warnings around San Francisco Bay yeah 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 so I think we need to think about not just the dog although if your dog's got fleas you've got to get rid of it you've got to think about your family you've got to think about the environment you've got to think about the 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 ecology so that's just a, to a preamble really but okay so what can we do to avoid the 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 pharmaceuticals we can just just use the pharmaceuticals when things are really 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 bad yeah because we've tr and when we've tried everything else and the trick when you've got fleas and ticks is to get in early and to go in really really hard the topicals that we use in my practice and brendan you may have others um, the topicals that we use here are cedar side, cedar, C-E-D-A-R, cedar like the tree. That in my world means tree. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a tree. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Before cedar. you know it, it'll be like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cedar. Cedar. This is like uh, an animated dance. It's, well, it's a bit like. <laughs> of dance. It's like play school, isn't it? Yeah. Do your fleas. Hey. See, this is a tree, children. <laughs> okay, cedar side. It's just everybody says cedar. Problems. What do you mean? How do you spell cedar? I say like the tree. Oh, cedar. Yes. Okay, so cedar side, like pesticide, cedar side. It's a spray. You can buy gallons of it. So if you've got lots of big dogs, that's probably the most economic way of doing it. If you've got smaller dogs, there's a fantastic product but by my wife's company, which is called Dermadog. I have to say this because otherwise I won't get any dinner. And it's called... <laughs> well, so you have to declare your interest. I do have to come declare my interest, always being straight. So uh, Dermadog Insect Defense Spray. I can go and get you an example when one of the other two guys is, is, is having a chin wag. Um, uh, so that's to treat on the outside to treat on the inside there's a product called billy nomates which has been around for probably about 10 years now it's got a very good reputation there are other others pro dog raw has just come out with one called keep off me which is really quite a strong garlic and and uh, ginger and brewer's yeast it's really quite pokey and um there are so one of, another one called yeah. ticked off i think is uh off by my the, the apple cider vinegar garlic and echinacea probably fenugreek and all sorts of things and yes. i think ticked yes. off is really popular that's joe arben holistic hound.ie check her out she's cool okay yeah. cool cool yeah. cool okay so these are the th herbs that you put in the food no harm to anybody uh and and actually they're very good for you because the help with the gut and the blood and circulation and all sorts of things okay so there's a lot to be said not only do they kill but not only do they deter the fleas and ticks they will uh they make your dog better okay yeah. so the final thing is and this is a little bit left field but there are no there's two things one is one is a bit left field it's called em as in electromagnetic em beads these are tiny little beads that i saw them that, that people with uh, with with, with uh, fish with um, tanks of fish, they use it to cleanse the water. Okay, but it has been found, and I've got some very sensible clients who I trust, who who live in the New Forest, who who and use. Just in case you don't know, that's what we're talking about. Oh, that's a flea. a flea. Nice, nice. Cool. Cool. showing off his his technology. Yeah, lovely. Uh, oh, it's moving. Oh, yeah. Nice. It's, it's I like video. it. Gross. Oh, look at look that. at that joke. Look at that. God, I don't like bugs. Okay, 
And these these beads, what you can do is you can you can get them and you string them together, string them around the dog's neck. And my clients claim that that has kept her dogs flea and tick ticks primarily because they're it, they're rampant this year. Apparently, it's a really bad year for ticks. So anything you can do to to avoid That's the pharmaceuticals is a good thing. I wonder, what, I wonder what's behind those uh, those colours. I want to know about that. I want to know I, more. I don't know. I've looked into it, and there's no. They they talk about all sorts of things. Oh, it's electromagnetic magnetic waves and what have yeah. you. But from a yeah. ceramic, tiny little yeah. ceramic tube. I know, yeah, I it might be. I mean, I, I think a couple of people just put up a couple of things there, Nick. As you were speaking, there was just yeah. loads of recommendations coming up. Uh, somebody um, said diatomaceous earth. That's brilliant. The reason I like diatomaceous mm -hmm. earth is because it kills it kills things mechanically. Other topical chemical treatments kill things chemically, while this kills them mechanically, kind of chokes them up a bit. Now, it's a very fine dust. It's essentially the white cliffs of Dover. Do it outside, you know, uh, that kind of thing. I'm a fan of it. Bren is doing the plumber's draw, we call that. <laughs> uh, when you, How much is that going to cost? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love that with a bit of neem. Now, Bren, you are going to criticize my product live on air. What, it's what you not like about DE, Bren. Codex, food safe. Yeah, absolutely. Safe as houses. But I just have, you know, and some of the guys in the comments uh, are saying, you know, variable response. And yes, actually, you yeah. know, the whole stuff about choking fleas up now, it's it's supposed to be about does it grind them down? Does it interfere with uh, some of the, the pathways it's and stuff? It. But Spiracles. unfortunately, I would always say test, then treat. OK, for all of these products, no matter how holistic, how um, chemical, always test, then treat. OK, comb through. Um, uh, I think I've done a video on one of the Facebooks and, and things like that about combing through what you're looking for, making sure that you um, if you're thinking it's flea dirt and you want to differentiate it, you know, sprinkle it on some white tissue, drip on some water, carry on combing through. And then if you you know fold it over the tissue, you come back and the streaks of red, that is flea dirt. That is your pet's blood, whether it's cats or dogs, okay? That's mm -hmm. your pet's blood passed out in little comma-shaped bits of dirt, which is then effectively the food for the little um, intermediate stages, so the nymphs of the fleas, okay, the, um, the larvae. So that's what they eat on. So, you know, ultimately your that flea feces is gathering in your pet's bed. Um, and that's where all of the off stage uh, larval stages are. Um, and they will eat that flea dirt and then they pupate and become adult fleas. And it's again. the dirt that they have a reaction to, isn't it? As opposed to the flea. No, no, not always. The, the, the oh. dirt obviously is just another element that's gone okay. through the fleas. Okay. The flea bites the saliva of the flea that often is the biggest influence of allergy for those think, dogs that are allergic a, to fleas. You think they'd have a bite that doesn't alarm the immune system, wouldn't you? Like a tick. Oh, many dogs they don't. It's, many many dogs don't react. Oh, okay. Okay. Quite, but also quite the opposite. They want to evoke a oh, response yeah. of bringing blood to the surface. They want to cause inflammation so that they wow. can suck the blood. Shit. Okay, they can suck the tissue fluid that comes with effectively yeah. that reaction. That's really yeah. good. Thing is, if you if your dog hasn't got ticks and you're going to a, uh, uh, to the woods where you go every every weekend, you can't test because you won't find the ticks until you've been to the woods. And therefore, something like the uh, Dermadog Insect Defense or the Cedar Side yeah. is good. Or the just as a, as an ongoing thing, I will give it from about Easter to about October. Or you know, just uh, whenever the first see any ticks, crack on. I hate it. Uh, and I that's hate Lyme's ticks. disease is the biggest issue. I was there just going to say, yeah, okay. but it's in, only in a rare amount of ticks. But it's on the march. Ticks are on the march, and uh, and that's just the way it is. Like Lyme's disease is to be respected. Something I uh, near and dearest to me uh, went through it, so I can I know a couple of my friends, in fact, three people I know. So to be respected, I I hate ticks a lot. So I actually put a free tick remover tool in the things that I send out. But I posted on ticks two weeks ago, and uh, Derma Dog came up. Nick, you'd be delighted to hear. I said, guys, who's in? I don't want to hear from people that aren't in ticky areas. I want to hear people in ticky areas. What natural products have you had success with? Because mm. it's, it's going to be different for every dog as well. It's not always going to work, so you're going to have to change. So uh, a good few products came up, but I got a hot lead on uh, geranium oil, and uh, somebody posted up a cool study on geranium oil that actually gets into the dermal layers and spreads like uh, flea treatment would. And so, in a way, it offers you 
that similar kind of protection. And in, in studies, it shows it's really, really effective in a lot of dogs. Not all dogs, mm -hmm. but for ticks, it's really, really effective. So geranium oil uh, and d uh, Dermadog definitely came up. Lemongrass, oh, she's got rose geranium. That's it. That's it. There you go. Yeah. So check and I would out. also. Th so the other one we use Fantastic. in practice is the lavender and rosemary oils. Oh yeah. Um, uh, we generally would take uh, three uh, drops of each of those aromatherapy oils. Uh, so these, for if you don't want to, if you want to prepare it yourself because you've got aromatherapy oils at home, you basically three drops of each into a cup of water. You take the flea comb, you give it a thorough whisk through that, and you comb it through. But I would say with any of the aromatherapy oils including the uh, geranium and the, the rose oils is offer them to the pet first put them on a cloth in their favorite bed if they don't sleep in their favorite bed you know they don't want to be anywhere near those oils please don't put them on your pet you mm -hmm. should look at some of the alternatives because that's a little bit of zoo pharmacognosy that we've talked about before yeah. but actually you know for some of these they are therapy oils and if you're applying them to a mm. pet that doesn't want them, doesn't need them, or they're maybe, you know, contraindicated for the mm. other issues they've got, you could be making that other health issues slightly worse. So I would say with any of the strong aromatherapy stuff, mm. really offer it up to the pets first. Don't just blunder on in there. But I absolutely agree. Nick, I mean, we, we now broadcast around the world. There's people in the States, you know, North America, there's the people down, um, uh, you know, throughout Europe, um, we've got to remember, it's not always uh, looking at um, Lyme's disease. There's loads of other tick-borne diseases and absolutely agree. For ticks, slightly different situation. You need to look at those protections. You do, yeah. But if, great... luckily in the UK, if you're not on the West Coast, so you're not in the Highlands, Lake District, Wales, down onto you know Cornwall and then across the South Coast, Generally, we're not too bad. Certainly, we're really fortunate in the Leeds area. Uh, very, un, you know, unlikely to come across Lyme's disease as a major issue. Mm -hmm. um, but where you are going to tick-borne areas, you're going to have to make that hard choice about yeah. giving a treatment. And I would the the last thing I would say on this for the naturally treatments is not necessarily just relying on one thing, but mm -hmm. maybe considering a combination yeah. of yeah. them of the amber beads yeah. of the the ultrasonic repellent. Yeah, totally. The, Good idea. You know, the, the yeah. There's a there's oh, some brilliant. great. Okay, that's the yeah. ultrasonic. Ah, oh, cool. It works for the house. How much success do you find that in its own right? Have you had people come back and say, yeah, this on its own has been brilliant, Nick? Uh, I would always use, I would use herbs on the inside. I would use herbs in the food on the inside. I would use oh, uh, intake, intake defense spray on the outside. And and if necessary, I would use that really. Anything to yeah. keep away from the pharmaceuticals. I'd rather the ticks than the, I'd rather the ticks than the advocate. I think yeah, that's that's kind of close to the mm -hmm. truth. It's not just Lyme disease that ticks carry. They call it Lyme disease and co-infections because it transmits a, a, a raft of different yeah. infections. It's not just uh, Borrelia or whatever it is. Uh, there's a great tip there from Rachel Mack. I don't know if it's true. I'm just reading out some of the ones I'm finding here. Uh, a lint roller post-walk to catch any ticks that are crawling. That's a pretty good idea. So wow. if you're walking in woods, you're supposed to c cover your legs, even with tights. Uh, you know what I mean? The, the thinnest layer will stop them, but will latching on. But you should, that's why... Sorry, uh, I can just think of men in tights now. That's like... That might happen now. <laughs> on a pair of shorts so i think uh so like you kind of you should be covering up your legs at a minimum when you're walking through woods that's something you need to get prepared for but your dog can't do that so you do need to be tick aware for yourself as well because your doctor is not going to diagnose a tick bite uh, most of the time and even if even with people with lyme disease struggle to get a definition get, get a diagnosis um and the, just before we bust onto the um the the tests uh bren the, somebody just posted back there and, and it's quite typical something you hear june kershaw said I've tried absolutely everything. You know, she's done the single protein diet. She's watched her vaccinations, doesn't chemically overdo anything. Mm. And she's tried absolutely everything. And still her dog is very bad. And she made a, 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 a something that kind of puts up my uh, my spidey senses. And she said, uh, but still my dog is itching. Her skin is going bald. Her skin is starting to flake. And when I hear flaky skin, I immediately start. To, if I see a dog chronic itch and a bit of bald and a flaky skin, my first thing is it might be yeast. OK, because yeast is, is chronically itchy and it's hard to put back in the box just because you're doing everything right. It doesn't go away in, by itself. And more to the point, it is so cheap to, to find out if you're down the vet, ask them to swab the dog. They'll tell you if it's a yeast issue or not. Uh, and then you can ask your vet for advice on, on how to fix that. But maybe we should do a yeast kind of show, lads, and get your opinions on it. But. Uh, what, what are the other causes when you see flaky skin going bald flaky skin 
what other things leave like yeah, you've got to remember you know, the, the itch can be exacerbated by any number of things but certainly secondary infection so where the balance has been disturbed from diet or whatever else the underlying inflammation is and then you get secondary inf infection that can set off a whole other raft of immune mediated responses and, and inflammation and that can be itchy in its own right so you know look at the bacterial uh issues look at the yeast issues um sure they you know, look at the bacteria you, you have to get those back in the box before you can uh, you know totally address the the itch under. Yeah. and this is why some of the medicines that are out there also fail to work you know there's a a, a, a monoclonal antibody now used you near know, cytopoint um and one of the big things you know people come to me saying oh it's no longer working and you that there's a couple of reasons one it could be that the dog is now effectively wiping out that drug but the other big one is that they've actually picked up a yeast and, and bacterial yeah, infection exactly. and and that's not been addressed Tough. and therefore the cytopoint's not going to work any yeah, longer exactly so, yeah so uh, so ben so someone turns up to us uh, and they've got um they want to do a food allergy test they want to or not if just in an allergy test they want to find out what's bothering this pet and there's a range of options and there's a lot of confusion over what works and what doesn't. This was a slide that we did when we were all, that was our first seminar together, guys, if you remember four, mm. four or five years ago. I put up this slide for uh, the allergy testing. This was a study by Bethlehem uh, in 2012. And they said, they concluded after looking at the allergy tests at patch testing, which is this one in blood, uh, they said a positive reaction on a dog with these tests is not very helpful. So if they identify an issue, oh, you've got a problem with protein. That's not very definitive. For example, if it's done with blood, it's maybe 35% right, 15% uh, uh, if it's IgE. In other words, they're very low readings for blood. But if they're negative, in other words, if the protein didn't turn up, if, the, if beef wasn't on the list or pork or chicken uh, or whatever env environmental allergen, well, then for patch test, if it didn't elicit a response, that's very, very reliable for a patch test. The problem with a patch test is it's kind of gruesome. Uh, but the serum, the blood test, is only still at best 80% effective if it's not on the list. In other words, these things aren't definitive. So, Bren, where are we with allergy tests? And can I just clarify, Connor, are you talking about patch testing for food or patch testing for indoor allergens like house dust or patch testing Allow me to for, check. for pollens? Allow me to check. Because Why, the, way, what would you think? the simplistic way I look at it is that, the, the, that patch testing or blood testing for indoor allergens, house dust, or yeah. outdoor allergens, pollen, is pretty reliable. But but any test there is for food is not reliable, ah, as we see there. So okay. I suspect those figures are for food testing. Okay, that's let's check it that's the, the, the peanut test for people is definitely a skin um, allergy test. That's the, the you know standard that they use, isn't it? is uh, oh, is it? uh wow. have you got a, have you got a peanut allergy right let's do the peanut allergy <laughs> test yeah but that's in fact that, that's because peanuts will provoke an anaphylactic ige and so maybe going in the skin you will get a good reaction whereas with okay, so it, mast cell yeah, response I, is through ige and this is yeah. what also alarms me with this is that they're looking at the igg levels and that's misled loads of vets to say as soon as their igg levels are up Let's call it an allergy to that thing. I thought that was definite. I thought that was no, definite. No, IgG is exposure. Okay. So what, what we do with desensitizing vaccines is actually you drive the immune response towards IgG so that you reduce the IgE response and therefore you desensitize the animal. So this is why it is so important that you're understanding. So this is, you know, guys, you know, I always say to everybody out there, you know, at least, um, you know, tests are at best a guide, at worst, terribly misleading, okay? And there's a couple of reasons around that. Well, more than a couple, but I'm just going to go through a couple tonight. Uh, one is you can only test about 30 allergens, tops in any of those tests. If you go beyond that with skin testing, you're at risk of provoking more you know, anaphylactic type reactions and things like that, because the amount of stuff that you're pop popping into your poor little dog, you'll have a patch both sides, all the rest of it. Um, mm. You just don't want to go down that route. So yeah. that is one of the downsides of doing the skin tests mm. is that it's a higher risk because you're putting in some of the allergens. There's a higher risk of an adverse reaction. Taking the blood off, 
then again, they can only test with, and it's quite expensive. You know, we're talking three to 400 pounds to do these blood tests because, and even then to test those proteins, you know, they're looking at specific antibodies for those allergens. You're only gonna get about tops, I think it's 20 foods and for the environmentals, they actually split it down into trees, grasses, and then other weeds, they call them, but generally flowering plants, okay? And they will split that down. Um, so you'll get about six or seven of each of those. And then you get on top of that, usually the house dust mites, the forage mites, um, the molds, um, and then occasionally you'll get um, sarcoptes or something like that thrown in uh, as the, uh, the sort of mite range uh, and sort of autumn stuff that might be going on. So again, just right there, there's more than seven trees in the world, okay? Yeah. There's more than seven grasses. It's a grossly course. misunderstanding there's, part you know, of it. So, uh, you, know, you, you just wouldn't believe the thousands of possibilities that are out there. So if you look at this slide, you know, we were talking just earlier about the fact that 15%, if there, there's a positive result, it's only 15% accurate for the IG. Why is that? Well, actually, if you find the one thing positive on that test, please don't think that's the only thing that your dog is allergic to, because you've just missed the millions of mm. possible allergens that are also out there in its environment. Yeah. So you cannot, cannot make an assumption that you've hit the nail on the head with that one test. Yeah. We've got However, I, I, I see a lot of itchy dogs, as do you, uh, Brendan, and uh, it's quite frequent that it's quite often they haven't had the blood test. You know, this dog will be two years old. It'd be really itchy or will have been on prednisolone and cytopoint and goodness knows what and an antibiotic for an infection and washes for yeast and what have you. So um, we will change the diet and, and do all those things. But sometimes it's very orientating. It's very helpful for the owner to get a blood test to see and and. I think that 19 times out of 20, they will be on those common allergens. Yeah. yeah. If it's in the, if it's worse in the summer, it's, they, they are often uh, on there. I'm going to come to that answer um, to that query. Uh, but the thing is, if they're negative for yeah. all 20 indoor allergens and all 20 outdoor, you can't say that they, that is a clear test. They are not allergic yeah. to those. And you are, you are right, Nick. I just checked that study there, okay? And uh, it is uh, in the diagnosis of canine adverse food reactions. So you're spot on. Okay, so testing for food is... is, is, is hit and miss. It's very hit and miss. Yeah. Testing, for, testing for indoor allergens, I always do this, point at the carpet. Indoor allergens is pretty reliable and for outdoor allergens is pretty reliable, but... It's it's limited. There, it's it's, saying it's a limited again. test. It's yeah. a limited test, okay. and therefore, um, you know, if, there's, if you've got twenty species in twenty species of tree in your town, and you only test for six of them, yeah, like they're yeah, just yeah. they're just a Disney yeah. amount of fungi just yeah. dumping stuff into the air every day. It's just it's impossible to to to. So there are a couple of other things that we just Go need on, to because yeah. I'm conscious of time. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. um, we've got a saliva test from you know our friends over at uh, NutriScan okay um that's an IGA and IGM um supposed to also therefore be seen uh to show up contact sensitivity so almost hypersensitivity reactions as well as true allergies okay uh, is how it's been put across by our great colleague uh, Jean Dodds Jean Dodds um, yeah she's been uh, and there are a few other people that have thought that they've been sending off for a saliva test um, and it's not actually been for those antibodies to be looked at it's been for what we call a bioresonance test and they've ended up paying um, so the NutriScan uh, I think is in the region of a couple hundred quid. pounds yeah 300 yeah, quid. Uh, there we go um, but, but you will often find the bioresonance test can be as low as 60 pounds yeah yeah I would say there are some great bioresonance people out there, but nine times out of 10, I'm afraid, guys, we've come yeah. across people that if you send two samples to them, they will give you a pre-packed result, okay? Ooh, and send it out to you as to, you know, almost a sampler. And 
I, I am disturbed by how easy that is. So I reckon if you're paying 30 to 60 pounds for a test that's going to tell you all of the ins and outs of your allergies, your pet's allergies, it probably isn't worth the paper it's written on. Well, I'm you know afraid. what? I got, I got caught with that, lads. So I'm not, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I got what caught with that. You, I, I, pro, I pro promoted Easy DNA, and I shouldn't have named the company. So no offense to Easy DNA. I'm sure it's a very reputable company. Um, I'm just saying that that's that's the guys I link to. Um, and yeah, so but the test is quite cheap. I did contact one of these bioresonance um, uh, allergy tests there last week, guys. I don't know if I told you, but um, so I just asked some very direct questions. I said, "What's the difference between you and NutriScan? Uh, what's the di you know um, if can, if I was to send two samples from the same dog, are, am I assured I'd get the same readings and that kind of thing?" And the answers were just absolutely not clear not transparent at all so i was not happy i asked the questions again they 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 evade them i said okay gone so i lost a lot of faith but you'd already flagged that with me bren and so uh yeah so now i'm taking i recommend them so i'm take i took them off my way i'm in the process of taking them off my did website. you send them two samples that was a hair analysis i did years ago i sent hair analysis from the same dog an hour apart and the, the readings came back i mean not even a bit a little bit different completely different uh, readings and you know i'm sure maybe the way i handled it and all sorts of things may have been the case but i didn't realize the same thing was going on with and i'm sure it's true to buy resonance just like everything else and if it's used done correctly by people but i can't have faith in that at all let alone these tests that we're looking at here it's like okay i can't be telling people to go do these tests if i can't trust the readings i don't the, the only way to do it is is an elimination diet there's a couple yeah. of great points here for guys from people uh, therapy oils should be put into a carrier oil thanks jan eileen davies says uh, heads up guys real amber is uh, expensive so don't expect an amber collar to be cheap so that's a really good that's a really good tip in almost everything that you do in the natural world there is always a cheaper version of it remember when i made raw dog food i wanted to put green tea in one of these products and uh i want i had a choice 20 euro a kilo or 420 euro a kilo for my green tea both enable me to say green tea but only one has uh active kind of bioactive compounds in it wow. that's the 420 euro a kilo how many people do you think are spending 420 euro a kilo on on green tea in makeup products and that kind of stuff that's the difference so mm. it's very tough to trust so go buy your reviews reviews are great if something's got thousands of reviews even amazon's useful for that and you can check out the reviews and then buy the product from the company themselves off amazon but reviews people are, are smart they're clued in if the stuff works you get the reviews once those reviews go into the four or five hundred six hundred eight thousands there's another really famous product that falls into that and that's cbe oh yeah yeah absolutely yeah and yeah but another crazy effective thing, guys, CBD for itch. Would that be a good idea? CBE or CBD? CBD, CBD, CBD. CBD for itch. Yeah. Right. yeah, CBD for itch. There, there is work to suggest it. Um, it's all about the no nerve pathways and yeah. effectively it's uh, blocking some of the itch pathways going yeah. through so you reduce the itch uh, that way as well as some of the benefits you're going to get from the oils itself, you know, the essential fatty acids, yeah. um, you yeah, know, all of that. It's good so, for so many things. Pat Penny yeah. Lane says, my cats would rearrange my face if I tried to spray or pat them with anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> what was the point of having cats? I don't understand why people have cats. No, oh, I'm sorry. I, don't, I love them and I respect them as animals, but it's like, I'm not just... If an animal's not even going to let me pat them, what is the point? <laughs> have them out the back. You know, oh, my God. A, a cat. Okay, There's going to be a week, guys, that Connor's not going to be on here. We're going to just talk I've, about cats. I've blown my cover. No, I, I did live with a cat. I'm also allergic to some cats, but uh, I I, um, I did live with a cat once over in Australia, and he was he was great crack, Howard. So I am only messing, sort of. Um, okay, so, guys, 10, 1945. Last tip. Okay, so, guys, two tips for me. So natural things for seasonal allergies. My two top tips at the moment are quercetin however you guys want to pronounce that, quercetin, usually with bromelain. Uh, so you buy that online, really effective uh, for anti-itch and natural. Give it a go. Try it on its own for a couple of weeks and see if it helps. And the other one is the nettle remedy, fresh little green nettles. Pick a few of them, put them in a mug, cover them with hot water, which kills its stinging ability, the formic acid bit. But there is a whole heap of stuff in nettles that are good, that are going to help you with your itch. It's kind of like venom and anti-venom. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of truth to it. There was a great study backing it up showing its antihistamine effects are unbelievably effective. You can use a little bit of the tea or you can mulch it all up and, and keep them as little ice cubes and pulp them in as food as you would spinach or broccoli. So, um, you know, there's a bit of truth to those sort of things. Any other very quick natural tips, guys? What would be your go-to for well, a really, what about, relief? 
What about wilting? If you wilt nettles, because there's loads of nettles around at the moment, you just wilt them and put them in the food like you would spinach. Oh, yeah. If you just dry them out, it, does, it, it stops the sting. Yeah, if you dry yeah. them, that would do it. But yeah. wilt, you just put them in the steamer. Steamer, yeah. Steamer, yeah. Cool, them, yeah. And then throw them in. It's yeah. just cheap, cheap spinach. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Um, homeopathics can be useful with, uh, with, uh, with um, pollen allergies. So um, or de definitely worth looking into that. Yeah, also, really, just wipe your dog down, and if yeah. necessary, wipe it down with some of Connell's nettle tea oh, yeah. when you come back from your walk so yeah, that you reduce good. the amount of pollen on the dog's paws, legs, belly. Yeah, there's a lady there said, uh, what would you recommend? I, uh, she's clear, the dog's got, clearly got a yeast issue in the paws. Guys, I wish I had the product to hand, but I don't. There's a product I constantly recommend for this. I don't recommend products very often, but it's called Dermacin. And Dermacin is made by, uh, it's over in Czech, I think. Um, and you have to order it in, I'm afraid, but it's about 50 euro. Uh, but it is a liquid that they isolated a yeast that lives on the outside of roots. Because think about it, roots are this soft little structure that live in the wet soil. So fungus will just have that for supper. And they try, but all plants in Europe anyway, house this little parasitic yeast, single-celled yeast on its roots that attack any fungus that try to attack the root. Mm. So that's how roots don't rot in the ground. And so these Czech scientists said, well, cool, we can take this and maybe use it to fight a yeast infections. And that stuff, so they can't. They contacted me a while ago. I, you get contacted. You, I say yes to free things because I love free things. And they sent them out, and I trial them, and the, the trial is up on my website, and I, I can put it up on uh, Patreon, and I'll show you. But mega effective for, it's an oil that can go in the paws. It's an effervescent tablet that you can wash the dog in for yeast issues. If I had a stubborn yeast issue, Dermacin oil or dermacil oil or the effervescent tablet is a really good idea for that stubborn wow. paw itch. It's a really amazing product. Um, and, you know, if you don't want to buy a product, but you've got it in your kitchen already because you're already feeding it to your dog, uh, I found apple cider vinegar. Somebody, yeah, Lynn Hobbs has just mentioned it. I think, um, you know, I have found, you know, bathing their feet down twice a day with yeah. that. Um, as, as it's really effective to reduce yeast. Even you can use it in ear formulations and things like that as well, um, you know, for yeasty ears. And we need to touch on ears are, you know, effectively just curved over skin, extra moist, extra hot. So you've got to think, you know, all of the stuff we're talking about for skin here is the same situation for ears. If your dog just has recurrent otitis, so ear issues over and over again, it may well need to be treated as if it's got a skin issue. It's just the fact that actually that area of the skin in the ear has been affected and actually showing the symptoms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do take all of the stuff we've talked about today and the last time um, about skin, uh, about itchy skins, and you can use that for recurrent otitis. Right, cool. Uh, That's great. Uh, all the stuff that I talked about, uh, keeping fleas off, I, I did a little a short post uh, April the 29th on Patreon, so you can you can see it there. I had a client talk to me today. She said, "I'm um, I don't I, I I want to contribute to Patreon, but I don't want to be stingy. What's kind of an average con contribution?" And I said, "I reckon it's probably about five dollars." Yeah, like, she said, you know, I don't know whether to give you five five quid or fifty quid. I said, quid. Do you want to give us fifty? <laughs> really, really great. Irish <laughs> <Well>, talks. <laughs> just give us, give us what, what whatever you're comfortable with, and the average yeah. is about yeah. four or five it quid, is, which is coffee. an expensive it, coffee. Yeah. At the, at the end of the day, I think it's what we're trying to impress upon people is what they're comfortable with. Okay, yeah. because yeah. Um, some of the guys uh, have been great, and I've seen some amazing contributions. And thank you so much for all of those. Uh, and you know, you know, for those that can't afford it, and they just they're putting yeah. in, you know, a dollar a week or whatever it is, because yeah. we're around the world, yeah. uh, then that's just great. It's great. I, yeah. I, I just put up that coconut oil thing. Do you remember? I promised I would do that weeks ago. Um, but you know, I spent a day and a half on that piece because I went a down a total rabbit hole, uh, and it's really interesting. But you know, it's two and a half thousand words, and I put that up on Patreon. So. It's because I know the patch of money is there that I can sit there and give it a day and get to the bottom of coconut oil uh, and wrote it and I put it up on Patreon. And honestly, I wrote it in such a way that I thought this would actually be really good in the book. So if I was ever doing a 2.0, that's the, you know, so I like putting out quality content. I don't like doing rush jobs, but to do that, it does take me 
time to sit there and just totally zone in and do it because you got to you got to be in the place to, to do that sort of stuff. So I put that up on Patreon just before we came on in case you started slagging me that I didn't do it. Uh, and so uh, thanks. Yeah. And, and once again, thanks to Patricia Gethin, guys. Uh, Raw yeah. and Holistic Cat and Dog Support Group. Fabulous Facebook group for free. My God, they've got a massive bank of information. Just get on it and get help for nothing. It's great. So yeah. uh, thanks to them for the support tonight. And uh, right, guys, and next week, it's already been polled, so we know protein. that. Protein. 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 I can't wait to do that because yeah. there's plenty Big of it. We've obviously been working on him because he's already softening to the idea of feeding dogs 2.0. To, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys can do yeah. that. No. Um, that was just a way of getting the name of the book in there. I have to be yeah. really so, so. Connor, if you could get the book done by Christmas, that'd be really good. No problem. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, I'll just hide under a rock. No. I'm waiting for my hair to grow back after the last one, so I'm just, I need to recoup. Um, so, look, guys, uh, that, that was great. I really yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Really good. So, really um, good. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll suppose we'll see you all next week, guys. Thanks for being here. It was great. Thanks Thank for all you. your feedback. Uh, keep commenting underneath the video if you've got any questions. And we'll see you for protein this time next week. Yeah. All Brilliant. Right. All the best, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you.